Hey! Hmm? Oh! Is that... Isn't that the Frost Spear? Nice, nice! Let me see, let me see! Go ahead, here we go. See, this is for when you're cracking cold ones with the boys. You can stick the spear in their drink to bring it to that nice, cold chill. Yeah. And you can make the popsicles. Wow, it's exactly like the one in the books. He thanks, here's a token of my thanks. Whoa. That was for my grandpa. He always said, give it to the one who can show you the real deal. So don't worry about it. All right, next. Grandpa said he wanted to see, what was it again? Um, oh, I remember now. All right. So have you ever heard of the ancient short sword? I've seen it in books, but never in real life before. If you find it, please let me see it. Hey, hmm? Oh, isn't that the ancient short sword? So cool, let me see. This is for vegetables. And also your best friends. Wow, it's exactly like the one in the books. Wow, I saw one just like that in a book. Thanks for letting me see. Take this as a thank you. A diamond. Wow, I thought I didn't think the rewards were going to get any better. Give it to the one who's the real deal. So don't worry about it. Thanks for showing me so many things. I'm sure my grandpa is super happy. Wherever he is. Bye. Whoa. I kind of figured that his grandfather is dead, but man. Yeah. Hey, mister. What is it, buddy? <laughs> You'll never guess what I found. Want to see? Sure. Okay, follow me. Oh, okay. Lead the way, Tebow. I didn't expect to be doing this. Uh, we're supposed to be going to the new area this episode, but Tebow, Tim Tebow has some things to show me. Come on, Tim. What? Do you, what? Do, what's the thing? Oh, I know. Oh, I know where you're going. You're going to the demonic statue of death. Y you know that's dangerous, right? You probably only have, as a child, one heart. That's kind of dangerous. Yeah, it's it's demonic. It'll take your soul. Um, were you talking to that statue? Well, kinda. Wow. You talk to statues? Weird. Okay. See you. G Bye, Tim Tebow. As I bask in the warm glow of this campfire, a thought crosses my mind. I can't help but wonder when we're finally going to get the Dark Souls and Zelda crossover game. Hey, guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to ready. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. When we last left off, we got the two final shrines in the Tabantha Frontier, and that means that this is... The episode. This is the episode where we lift the fog from the final and one of the largest areas of the game and thus completing the map in the final step before we head to Hyrule Castle. And it all starts with me climbing this ladder. Now you might wonder, why am I still cold even though I'm wearing snow gear? Well, there are a couple downsides to the build that I'm choosing. One of those is that I can only afford to have one cold resistant item in my uh, on my person because I'm using the snow boots which actually don't give any cold resistance for some reason and then I'm also using the Korok mask so I have off screen cooked up some cold resistant gear uh, it, a low buff should be enough I think and if not let's see okay yeah that, that is enough if not, I do have a meteor rod that I can quit, but for the most part, I would like to enjoy the mobility of my my boots while also being able to find Korok seeds, since that's that's what we're aiming for. Uh, as a reminder, this up as of this episode, we have 254 Korok seeds to our name, and counting or sorry, not 250, sorry, 354 Korok seeds to our name, which means we are. Uh, a little less than a hundred away from being halfway done with all the Korok seeds. And, also as a reminder, I plan... I do... Whoa. For life me, I could not figure out what that moose was. I just saw the the socks, and I was like, what on earth? That's so weird. 
Uh, I also need to remember to kill these, kill any enemies or uh, food game I see with fire arrows because it will give me, uh, actually no that doesn't work, I guess. Yeah, I guess that doesn't work. So what was I saying? Uh, yeah, I enjoy the mobility of these boots, but it means I have to have some cold in gear. I, I don't think that's what I was saying, but I don't think I'll remember what I was saying. Okay, so here we are in the new area. Oh, you, you, snowball fight. Snowball fight. Yeah. Tr try it. I dare you to do it again. Here. Do it. That didn't... No, grab the snow... Okay. I guess he doesn't want the snowball. In which case, I'm gonna have to kill him. Okay, let's see. Have I done anything off screen? I don't think I've done anything off screen other than Korok, so there's nothing to commentate about for that. Oh, and I bet that's a Korok seed. Dollars to dozens. That's a Korok. Maybe? No? Link, can you climb it? Thank you. That's not a Korok seed. Oh, that's, that's weird. Okay. Well, we'll use this to kind of shimmy off, get some height. There are a bunch of updrafts leading me who knows where, uh, but it is ultimately towards the tower, so I guess I won't complain. Hello, sir. Uh, you are dead. I guess you're not dead, but you're hurting quite a bit. Okay, so we're headed towards the tower first. That is our number one priority. Hello. Rhinoceros. That's not even a rhinoceros. That's like a, a dinosaur. It's like a, a rhino mammoth, which I don't think existed. But you know what? It looks cool, and so I think it's cool. Shoot me over there, Link. Link. Okay, yeah, we are heading towards the, the tower ultimately. I'm kind of just following this path for the time being. I don't know what this guy just did. Hello. Ow. I'm just trying to go past you. Did I jump over that? I totally think I did. That's awesome. That's so cool. Okay, I'm also not using my horse because I, I don't like breezing by areas. That just This is the final area. I want to savor it. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's a sh... Well, first of all, Korok seed. But second of all, what is that? We have stalactites, it looks like. Also not seeing the, the Korok seed, so I'll have to go there later. With keys on it? Oh. As a reminder, also, I keep I guess that's my segue this episode. Uh, this is the the true snow area of the game. There we've been in snow areas before, but none of them have been dedicated to just being us actually wait. I suppose this was. I suppose this was dedicated to being a snow area, but for the, for the most part, it... Well, actually, no, there is some non-snow areas there, too. So, yeah, this is, I think, as far as I can understand, 100% uh, a snow-covered area, which is pretty cool. Let's see, am I even heading towards the tower? I have a marker on my map, but I don't remember placing it. But this path is leading us somewhere. It's, it's, meand it's a switchback trail up the mountain. So I guess I shouldn't complain that I'm not having to climb... Because you seriously have to climb everything in Zelda. It's Zelda is basically Skyrim, which makes sense because Skyrim is also for the Switch. In fact, wow. This this walk really reminds me of Skyrim. Uh, oh, what's his name? The dragon that's voiced by Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario. Uh, oh, man, I can't remember his name. Um, oh, goodness. But you, you guys probably know what I'm talking about if you've you've played or seen Skyrim. It's part of the main story. But this really reminds me of... of that... of that mountain. And actually, isn't this... yeah, this is the, the big tree that we we heard about in the quest. Bird in the mountains. The lone cedar tree in Hoover Mountains. Uh, once upon a time, my grandpa stopped. Big tree. Huge snow white birdie with its spring spread wide. That is what we are looking for right now at this tree. This tree also is marked. Hmm. Was there a time specification? Took off flying after the Snow White Birdie. After he... Wait. After he got closer, he saw something super important inside its belly. So I guess I'll climb to the top of this tree. See if there's a giant Snow White Bird. Uh. I'm not seeing a bird here. Looked below him to the northwest. The north and west. Looking this way. I should see a bird. 
I'm half expecting the bird she's talking about to be a landmark, but I'm not seeing a bird. Yeah, I'm not seeing this bird, but this is a good opportunity for me to get the lay of the land and try to find the tower. I thought it would be easy to find, but it is nowhere in sight. I mean, it, it's nowhere. So, I guess if it's, if it's not in sight, then that means it's probably on the other side of this mountain. If I had to hazard a guess. Here, let, let's look. Yeah, I guess it could be on the other side of this mountain. We are trying to find that first. And I didn't see the Snow White Bird, so we're going to have to come back to that. I probably should have placed a, a travel beacon there. There's an updraft, which will take us up, I guess. It has a very, a very convenient shortcut. But otherwise, go away, Rhino. Otherwise, we're just trying to head around the mountain now. And I think I should probably summon aggro. There she is. Oh, I guess I guess that's one thing I've been practicing in between episodes. Towards the very beginning of the LP, someone told me about this ability called uh, whistle sprinting. And I should probably eat some more food. Uh, let's eat... Let's eat this. And basically they said if you press down on the D-pad while, uh, while out of stamina and whistling, um, you can run. And I thought that they were crazy because I tried it and didn't work, but I finally mastered it. Uh, you have to hold down the run button, so I'm, I'm holding it down. And then, while you do that, you just start mashing B. And you'll run faster while not consuming stamina. It's not faster than your normal run, but you can use it to alternate your running by doing this. And then, oh, I need to recover stamina, so let's let's whistle run. So it's, it's pretty useful. I'll, I'll try to be using it. I mean, it's one of those time-saving techniques that isn't... It's not going to change your life. It's not going to change your game uh, completely. But it's its there, and it's pretty good. Saves time. Oh! Sell me. Wait, do we actually get to meet Sell me? Yeah! Sell me. Huh, welcome to the middle of nowhere. Population? Well, us. Hey, wait a second. You hiked all this way to best... To meet the best there ever was at shield surfing, right? Yes, that's exactly why I came. Knew it. Well, too bad for you I'm retired, huh? It's been years since anyone knew me as the Duchess of Downhill. But if you don't mind get a few pointers from a has-been, I'd be happy to critique your technique. Sure. Such enthusiasm. I haven't seen anyone passion like that since, well, me. But I'm not just any surfer come late. But I'm not just any surfer come lately. I was the best. And that means advice isn't free. So how does 20 rupees a session sound to you? Yeah, that sounds fair. Smart choice. I always say, if you're not willing to put your money where the, your mouth is, how serious are you really? Then let's get straight to, to the slopes. Follow me. Mm -hmm. Do you need a rundown on how this works? Uh, no, that's okay. Oh, so you already know what you're in for. Suits me. I hate having to explain to casuals anyway. What I suggest is starting simple with a basic course, so we can take a look at your downhill fund <laughs> fundamentals. Straight down from here, you'll see a big bridge. Why don't you st start by surfing your way there? It's a pretty no-frills course, but it'll help me get a good bead on where you're, where you're at with your technique. If I dig the way you surf, I'll let you advance to the next step. But we can go down that hill when, uh, we, can go down that hill when we get ah! to it. I want to see you shred out there. You ready? On your mark? Get set. Go! Uh, this is not the tower, but it's it's fine. So we're heading to the bridge, I guess. I guess I could fly, but this is probably a bit faster. Man, this this shield looks cool to surf on. It, it's one of the shields that actually it makes sense to be able to surf on. Whereas with the light now shield, you probably just kind of stop. Okay, come on, just kind of bank off some of these hills, get some extra speed, turn wide. I don't think I've overshot it. It's this bridge down here, right? Yes. Let's let's angle the camera in, in a certain way. If I if I just press uh, center behind or the target, then it will actually follow me wherever I I, I look. So wherever I move. Yay! Oh, did I do it? And time. You clocked in at forty six ninety nine. Pretty average time, all told. But I'm not too keen on letting you move on. But well. 
I'll make it your call. You comfy where you are, or do you want to push ahead anyway? Do your worst. Hmm. Let's put the test aside for now and just ask you straight out. What does shield surfing really mean to you? It's life. Uh... It's love. All hail the mighty surf. Life? It's your whole life? That's your answer? <sighs> Slipping, crashing, and falling over cliffs is no kind of life for anybody. Trust me, I know. If that's how you see, see things, you're in no shape to advance yet. Sorry, but I'll have to ask you to do the basic course again. Hmm. Oh. Okay, well, let's then let's do it. Oi. Meh. Oh. Uh, are you pulling my leg? Though, these days, I'd probably answer the same way. Shield surfing is how we express a passion that we can't put into words. Surfing has, is its own meaning. Funny, I started out thinking I'd teach you a few tricks, but I ended up learning something pretty <laughs> important. I think you just, you'll be just fine on the advanced course, but don't make me regret that decision, okay? <laughs> so, wanna hit the slopes one more time? Sure. Now let's see you hang on onto the advanced slope. It's longer than the beginner course, but stick with it. The upside for the advanced course? Finish it, and I'll give you a nice shield. How nice depends on your time. Of course, you'll still have to pay the instructor's fee, even on the advanced course. Still 20 rupees if you wondered. Sure. Getting stranded on a long course is no fun at all. Make sure you keep your goal in the back of your mind, okay? Mm -hmm. First, go straight under the same bridge that was your goal for the beginner course. Once you're through there, make a sharp turn before going down a long straightaway. You should be able to see a pair of big flags marking the finish line. Head for those and you can't go wrong. If you do manage to veer too far off course, I'll just drag you back here. So in other words, no flying. Ah. I want to see you shred out there. You ready? On your mark. Get set. Go. Okay, this time, I, I have a solution. I'm going to cut across this little mountain. Because the, the straightest distance between, or the shortest distance... Oh, that's bad. Between two points is a straight line. Also, I think I just wasted a bunch of time. Uh, that ain't good. Let's see if we can fall just to pick up some speed. Okay, come on. Come on, Link. If I make it around 45 seconds for the, the bridge, then I should be in good shape. Otherwise, otherwise I might have just murdered this run. Come on, cut some corners. Find the steepest slope and use that. Avoid the moose. 39, 40. Oh... 47 was my time last time, so I did, I did, uh, add some time to this. Okay, down through the bridge. There should be a long straightaway. After we turn left, I think? Oh, no, that's not good! No! That's so bad. Okay, long straightaway with two flags marking it, right? After we take a sharp left. I'm not sure we're supposed to go. This is bad. Although I think I'm... Yeah, I think this is straight away. Come on. Two flags. That's what I need. Two flags. Where is it? Oh, we're going pretty fast. But where are the two flags? I do not see them. Did we overshoot? Uh, we're still going downhill, so maybe not. But I do not see the two flags. Oh, there they are. There they are. Okay, we're on course. Keep going. 45, 46, 47, 48. You clocked in at 148? That's better than I've ever done. You beat my record. What are you still paying instruction fee what are you still paying in me instruction fees for? There's nothing else I can teach you. Well done, champ. A shiny new record deserves a shiny new shield. Here you go. And we get a night shield for that. Wanna hit the slope one more time? Uh, no, I think I'm through with it for now, now that I know what kind of rewards I'm getting. You must be cold. I'll see you back at the cabin. You can warm up there before you go. Oh. Thanks for stopping by. I look forward to seeing you beat your record the next time we meet. And that's that, but that's also not why we came. We're still after this mysterious tower, and I, I have a feeling that it resides at the very peak of the mountain, or at least we'll be able to see it from that peak. But I've kind of lost where that... Uh, I guess that works. That weird... <laughs> That weird old drowsy looking stone. Seriously, that that looks just like ember coal. Okay, so we're headed this way. And I'm only marking Koroks on my map because then I'll get them off screen in between episodes. Giant ice monolith over there, but I don't think that's what we need. I, I want a good view, and I think this is how we're going to be getting it. 
is ascending this mountain. Agro is going to have some trouble with this, but I, I, oh, I think that's as far as she can go. Okay, sorry, girl, but I'm going to go up here alone. If I need you, I'll whistle. How's that? Okay, so we're looking for the very familiar glow of a tower. There's a shrine over there. Uh, let's mark that. But we're looking for the familiar orange glow of a tower specifically. The sun is starting. Oh, I know that's that's sunset. Oh. So I guess we're gonna have to find this thing in the in the dark. But we're almost up to the top. Man, this this area is getting. I guess it's because just because of the snow area. But I'm getting some very strong uh, Xenoblade Valak Mountain feels from this. There's this area where. There are a bunch of crystals everywhere, and they glow at the night in during the night, and it's it's quite spectacular. Oh wait, there it is. It's quite spectacular. It's it's my favorite. It's probably my favorite area in uh, in Xenoblade. But it's just one of those things that. Wait, where'd it go? Where the was it this way? No, that's there's a shrine over there. But, where did the tower go? Oh, there it is. Okay. It's just one of those things. Xenoblade has so many of those great moments where, during the day, the area is a bit bland and expected. Uh, I know one of the first areas in the game is called Satoral Marsh. And, ironically, it's Satoral Marsh, and we have Satori Mountain, which isn't that much of a coincidence because the same people made this game as well. But, there's Satoral Marsh, and during the day... It's, it's very dreary, it's everything you'd expect a marsh to be, but then as soon as you turn off the lights, as soon as you, you wait until nighttime, the area just lights up, the music comes in, the, there's a chorus, it's just, it's breathtaking, and it's one of my favorite parts about Xenoblade. And it's something I'm kind of missing from Breath of the Wild, because I, I love seeing the design team of Monolith Soft stretch their, stretch their wings, or spread their wings a bit when it comes to areas. Like those those areas where they ha they're very predictable, and then suddenly something happens, and your your socks are just knocked off, and it's it's spectacular. And I guess Breath of the Wild has a few of those locations. In fact, uh, Satori Mountain, ironically, is one of them. It's it's very similar to Satoru Marsh in Xenoblade. Whenever you go there in the nighttime when it's glowing, but for the most part, the the team has tried to keep this. This place, this game, very realistic, very true to form, um, very open-worldy, without, without making it seem like, you know, Skyrim, where there are indeed places that don't have a purpose, just in real life. Which, I guess, is something to Skyrim's credit. Okay, it looks like there are a bunch of ice statues here. So we we're supposed to melt those to get past them, but thankfully we, we are... Whoa. We flew... Where did we start? We started from there. We started from there. Look at this. We flew that far. I think that's the farthest we've ever flown. Just period. Just ever. That's so cool. Okay, so we're on this tower now. We managed to shortcut it quite a bit. Let's... Let's lift the haze on the final area of the game. Seeing this animation for the last time, Sheikah Tower activated. This is the final one. And... We, we've done it. I mean, there are many episodes left in this area. There are still shrines that we have yet to uncover. In fact, if I... I believe we've gotten 14 or... No, no, 104 shrines. So there are 16 remaining. And I doubt that all 16 are in here. In fact, I know there aren't. Because someone in the comments mentioned an area that we haven't gone to yet that uh, we need to to get a shrine. So there, there is that, but we're well on our way. The, finally, we can see the entire map for what it is. This is... Complete map of Hyrule extracted. I didn't expect the game to give us a bit of fanfare there. Look at it. Here it is. This is the map. And, ooh, that's a maze. It's a maze with a face. Why does it have a face? But it's a maze. Wait a minute. 
Oh, dude. Oh, that's so cool. Do you see the, uh, the, uh, what, what do you, the, the illusion here? It's, whenever I wiggle the camera, the, the square in the middle looks like it's moving around. Because it's an optical illusion created by all these squares. That's so cool. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I, I love optical illusions. I, if I could, you know, I think there, yeah, I used to have an app that would, that would show optical illusions and... That's all it did, and it was it was so cool. It just it's cool to have your mind bent in in knots like that. And it looks like we're here we are. Uh, so where are we gonna start off from? I guess. I suppose we could start off by talking to this guy. That works. Hello. Hi. Hey, fella. Have you been shield surfing? I'm heading to Snowfield Stable to do some of that myself. Oh. This time I'd like to take a look at those bones on the Nor Heber North Summit. I really believe that any shield surfer who catches a glimpse of those can't help but be happy. And, if you recall, there is an old quest we got. Uh, not main quest. Side quests? There's an old quest we got. Oh, we need to finish that, but where is that old quest? Not really recipe. Uh, Leviathan bones. We got it uh, at the stable here. Uh, there are giant monolith monoliths. One is here. Uh, the other one, I think, is on this slope, I believe. And then the final one, I believe, is in Hebra. And we have to take pictures of them for some science project or something. Okay, so we've gotten everything. Uh, there is Dinral bringing his, his fiery warmth to us. And I believe those are the stables. So let's, let's head to the stables. And then end off the episode. I have no clue why that moose just stood there. That's that's kind of dumb. Are you gonna stand there? No, you're not. Okay, you're actually smart. Whoa! Did not see you guys. Uh, you get off that horse, and I am going to get my horse over here. Keep running, Link. Oh. That was awkward. Come on. Jump. Go, 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 go. Go. Oh. Take some lightning for your troubles. And you, sir. Or, I guess not. Okay, let's head to the stables. It's probably safer there. Whew. Let's head to the stables and end off the episode. I'm not sure where we are, where are we on time. Uh, but thankfully, yeah, this time I have... I'm carrying a timer with myself. The past couple episodes, I, I've been... I've been a bit lazy about that. And... Oh, I guess these aren't stables. No, these are sta Okay, these are stables. Good. I, I was a bit worried. I was, I was starting to wonder, uh, are these not stables? See, what are these called? Snowfield Stable. And let's check this out, as always, before we go see the shrine. Because these are always... Always cool. Whoa. I have no clue what just happened there with the lighting. That was kind of odd. Hey! What are... Oh, you're cleaning the floor. Hmm, what do I do? Wait, is this Tracy? Oh, no, it's John L. I, I've traveled to the east and the west in my great hunt for information, and now I find myself here in the freezing north. I heard there's a stall horse in this area, but I just can't take it any longer. It's too cold to look at... Look anymore. A stall horse? Beep, beep. You set off on John L's intuition sensors. You, you're interested in the stall horse too, huh? I just want to see this creepy stall horse monster once with my own eyes. If it really does exist, it'll be such a big scoop. But I can handle all sorts of dangers and hazards. But this cold, I can't stand it. And thus, that's how how Russia staved off Germany. Can you handle this task for me? I'll even reward you. All I need is a picture. Or some notes. Yeah, I can do it. Good answer. There's a rumor that it can be found with... with Stalkoblins? Is that what they're called? I always was calling them Stalthos, but apparently they are Stalkoblins. Cool. In North Tabantha Snowfield. Some have reported it all the way on the other side of the snowfield in the east, right in front of those bizarre ruins. <laughs> Good luck. I'm really counting on you. Stalhorse. Pictured. There's one quest. Do we have any others? Oh, no. But we have some wood. Oh, and I should probably see what beetle sells. Arrows... Which I should probably buy. Uh, warm darner. Actually, I should buy all of these. I'll take them all. 
Yes. No, stop. I'll take this because I need to cook some more food. And I'll take this because I need to cook some more food. Okay, uh, before we end off the episode, let's go into this shrine. We, we probably have some time in the episode left to do it. We're only at 29 minutes, and I normally cut a bunch of stuff out anyway. So let's, un let's, uh, let's discover this shrine and see what it has in it. Rin Uya Shrine. Oh, and for the record, we have 105 shrines. Directing the wind, Rin Uya Shrine. This is terribly obvious. I'm not sure if I should put it in here, but I'll, I'll see. What does it do? Okay, it activates that. Oh, oh, I see. We need to be on that when it moves. So we have all these... All these blocks. And what we're supposed to be doing is it's it's actually very reminiscent of a one of those ice slide puzzles, like in uh, Toilet Princess. So what we, we need to do is move this block so that it is creating a wall. Because when the orb rolls by, we don't want it to be pushed into this cranny. And then, I think we do the same with this. Yes. And then that's it, I think. So we'll do that. Go grab, oh wait, the orb's over here. Grab the orb and just stand on the platform and drop the orb and the, the rest of the wind should be able to solve the shrine for us, I think. So let's try that. We need to also keep our eyes out for the, the chest because there aren't that many places where it could hide. Okay, so place it here. It'll roll down. Catch the wind. Yoink. Uh, it, it, it did work. The blo box blocked it. And like a Rube Goldberg machine that Mythbusters would be very proud of. Or I guess that you'd see in McGee and me. We could ride the platform up. Now, where's the chest? Where's... There's the chest. Oh, I see. I see why. Uh, that's... Oh, wow. That's... That's cool. Okay, so what we need to do... Is pick this up. And bring it up here. And then, as soon as it passes that box over there, we need to run, grab that box, and move it over here before the ball gets into its destination. So we're going to drop this down. In fact, can I... Yeah, I can stasis the ball. Let's stasis the ball. Grab the box. Throw it over there. Get on the thing! Okay, it unstasises does not get stuck, goes over there, and then we complete this with the box, and then the box will push us, will give us a platform to jump off of to get the chest. Yeah, I think I, I think I did it correctly. Hopefully we don't need both boxes, that's a bit absurd. But I, I think we should be able to do this with just one box. So we run, jump, run, jump, and barely with the help of our sailcloth, we get through. And we get an ancient core for that. I have 17, but it's useful when I'm doing the build that I am. It, it's pretty useful. Okay, that's that was a good shrine. We, we got all the chests and making sure there's nothing else hidden around. I don't think there is. Let's get our 106th orb. That's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video in any capacity, please click like. Otherwise, if there's some place you'd like to see me explore or something you want to see me do, please type it in the comments because I will get around to it eventually and hopefully give you a shout out along the way if you gave the comment within a, a punctual manner. Thank you so much for watching. Next time in Pal Plays Breath of the Wild, we are going to be further exploring the Tabantha Tundra and the Heber Mountains next time. See you guys then!
On them, they just jump away. Here, watch. He's gonna. Oh no, no, he's doing this. Oh well, we might be able to. He's getting pretty low. Yeah, we, we're probably gonna be able to kill him off this. Break the weapon. Uh, let's equip this. Finish him off with sword beams. Whoa! Did you see that? He jumped over my sword beam. That's so cool.